In this ATEM quick tip, I wanted to talk about which solid state hard drive is best for using with the Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini Pro, ISO, and Extreme models. So you bought your ATEM and you got a Samsung T7 SSD and it's simply not working. For starters, that's because the T7 is not listed on Blackmagic's website as a compatible drive with the ATEMs. <laughs> If you're looking for the full list of hard drives that Blackmagic recommends, head on over to their website. I'll link to it below. Select the Support tab and then click on the ATEM Live Production Switchers. This will then bring up three columns below titled Latest Downloads, where you can find software and firmware updates, Latest Software Notes, I'll come back to that in a second, and Latest News. Under Latest Support Notes, you'll see a post titled ATEM Mini Pro ISO and ATEM Mini Extreme ISO Recommended USB-C Drives. Then click Read More to see the full list. With that said, here are some things to consider for everyone having issues with their recordings. First, make sure the ATEM firmware is up to date and your software control is up to date. As of making of this video, the last software update was the ATEM Switchers update. 8.6.4 on October 7th. This will obviously change over time, so be sure to check back on the website. Second, only use the drives that Blackmagic recommends. Sure, I know that other people in the forums have posted that they used a drive that wasn't listed and it worked fine for them, but your mileage may vary. And if I'm bringing my gear out for a client, I need to know it's going to work. I'm going with the manufacturer on this one. Third, only use the provided USB-C cable that comes with the drive. No adapters, hubs, or alternate cables. These cables are specifically rated to transfer data at the speeds these drives were made for. Some people make the mistake of pulling a USB-C charging cable that only passes power for their phone, and then they wonder why it doesn't work. Fourth, format your hard drive to XFAT on a computer before using it. Fifth, Clear older files off and make additional free space before each recording. Sixth, make sure that you set the streaming bitrate in the software control as that also plays a role in the recording bitrate. Some people found that after restarting their ATEM, this setting was set back to a default of blank and this was causing a lot of issues with their recordings. Lesson learned, bring a laptop so you can access the software control people. Last but not least, Keep the drive clear of any hot air from the exhaust fans on the back side of the ATEM. These drives get hot after writing a lot of information throughout the day, so keeping them cool and in a space where the natural metal enclosure can act as a heat sink is ideal. As always, stop when you can on breaks so you can have a break in the recordings, and this will minimize the possibility of corrupting a large, longer file. So was this ATEM quick tip worth it? Can you do me a favor and smash that like and subscribe button below so I know you'll come back and see me again soon? Thanks for that. See you next time.